On Nevada's Democrats are now in charge of the legislature and nearly every constitutional office. And for the first time in eight years, there's a Democrat in the governor's mansion, too. Yeah, quite a change from just four years ago when Republicans won every statewide office and controlled both houses of the legislature. Politics Now co-host Steve Sibeli is live in studio with us. He sat down today with Assembly Speaker Jason Frierson to talk about how Democrats use their majorities when the 2019 session starts, and that is in just three weeks, Steve. Well, Brian and Christiane, as you remember, Speaker Frierson's had his ups and downs in Carson City. Remember, he was swept out of office in 2014 by just 40 votes, but he won back his seat in 2016, became Speaker in 2017. Now, he's entering his second session as Speaker and says he wants to make sure Carson City's arguments don't turn out as bitter and nasty as Washington, D.C.'s. And to those critics who say Democrats will turn Nevada into California, Frierson says, no way. I spent 10 years in northern Nevada, and I've spent uh, twice as long down here in southern Nevada. Uh, I love this state. Uh, we have advocated for Nevada, not California, not any other state. Uh, I, th I think the concerns that some folks have are concerns uh, that don't take into account what we did last session. We had opportunities to advance policies that uh, some fo folks thought was too far, and we killed those, and mm -hmm. we stopped those. We had discussions, uh, but we managed to lead in a way that's consistent with Nevada, and I have no intention of doing Anything different this upcoming session. Well, Frierson said it was up to the Democratic majority to govern responsibly and to show voters who trusted them with their votes that they can enact legislation that reflects the will of the majority without necessarily catering to any particular group. In Nevada's legislature, the minority party has virtually no power. Republicans can't demand their bills be heard in committees or come up on the floor, and senators in Nevada can't filibuster legislation the way their Washington counterparts can. But Frierson said his goal wasn't to freeze the Republican minority out of the process. That's not leadership. Leadership is hard. I think uh, being collaborative is hard. Uh, including the minority party when you don't even have to is hard. But us being in the supermajority does not relieve us of the obligation to be responsible with the power that we have right now. And I think we have to think about the long-term uh, history uh, of the state and what we've done up till now. Uh, our former leaders, Joe Dini and, and Bill Raggio, were folks that I watched coming up. And I think those are leaders that set a standard that we can continue to have moving forward. But we have to be responsible with it, and, and we have to uh, be as inclusive as we can. I think that's what Nevadans want. Speaking of what Nevadans want, Frierson said Democrats will concentrate on issues including improving public schools and access to health care, especially care that people can afford. Frierson said Democrats heard those concerns when campaigning door-to-door -door in the 2018 elections. On other issues, he said funding for the stalled education savings account program isn't going to happen, but a bill enacting universal gun background checks stands an excellent chance of passing. Nevada legislature kicks off February 4th, and Patrick Walker and I will be there when the opening gavels come down. And for more of my interview with Speaker Frierson, tune into Politics Now. That's 4.30 p.m. Saturday, right here on 8 News Now. Okay. And just a reminder, Steve will also be right back here tomorrow night with us after Governor Sisolak's first State of the State address. We will have live coverage on 8 News Now starting at 6. Steve's Politics Now co-host Patrick Walker will be live in Carson City. Again, this all begins at 6 p.m. tomorrow night right here on Channel 8.